Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt DeSorbo, covering the algebra series for Skew the Script. Today, we'll be discussing systems of linear equations, specifically asking the question, does college pay off? Without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome in to lesson 3.1 of Skew the Script's algebra series. Today, we'll be discussing systems of linear equations. Specifically, college. College seems pretty nice, right? Some beautiful pictures, a, front, a fun graduation. However, there is one catch. The price tag. College can cost, on average, $28,000 a year. Just over $28,000 a year. That certainly adds up over time. And today's key analysis will address the question, is college actually worth the cost. If you'd like to follow along with today's lesson, check out the link below. Feel free to print or download the guided notes and work through the video with us. We'll be starting with constructing a system of equations. For example, uh, data cited here shows that average four-year costs adjusted for inflation in 2019 dollars um, has gone up from 1986 to 2019. It was just about $13,000 in 1986. In 2019, it was sitting at $28,000. That's a big jump. More than 2x, a more than double increase uh, in, in college full year costs. If you go to Google and ask, is college blank? The first couple questions are, is college worth it, both in time and money? So this is a very relevant question that we'll be addressing in today's Skew the Script. As you can see here, many do uh, wonder if college is worth the price tag. Um, there is uh, an upshot here. So median earnings in 2019 dollars, we can see that for high school, uh, it's about $38,000, $39,000, whereas it's much higher for college, about $63,000, $64,000 per year. So college grads earn about $25,000 more in median terms per year, uh, which is a big difference. But is that big enough to make college worth it? So thinking about high school versus college graduates, and we'll look at net earnings after age 22. Um, college costs on average, as we saw, about $28,000 a year, each year for four years. Um, so you're incurring a negative uh, value, a cost of $28,000 times four years, which comes out to negative $112,000 at age 22. That's a pretty uh, uh, hefty chunk of change. So basically at age 22 in college, you start already in the hole by $112,000. Instead of paying for college though, high school graduates actually earn money during these four years. Let's say we use the average number from before, 38,000 and about $700 times the four years of working, they make $154,000 and that's what they've cumulatively accumulated um, by age 22. So they start uh, at age 22 with $154,000. Now let's get to the per year earnings after age 22, when the college student is actually uh, has started to work. Again, we see that the college student makes about $25,000 more per year, higher median earnings. Um, so again, considering these two uh, different values, we can create linear equations to model the net earnings of each educational path. We're going to let Y be the net earnings and X be the years after age 22 for both individuals. So first with high school, again, we have our start uh, starting at age 22, our per year earnings and our X and Y variables. Um, we can define our function as the net earning, which is the start amount plus your earnings over years. Um, the earnings over years is just what you earn per year times the number of years. So we get Y equals the start, which is about $154,000 plus your yearly pay of about 38,000 times X, the number of years after age 22. We can rearrange to get every mathematician's favorite one-liner, Y equals MX plus B. We currently have Y uh, equals B plus MX, and rearranging gives us Y equals MX plus B, as you can see here. So now we can actually in interpret the slope and y-intercept, which uh, we've, we've already sort of uh, worked through. The y-intercept here is that you start with about $154,000 in earnings by age 22. And the slope is that you earn about $39,000 more per year for X years. So we have our model all set for high school. It's turned to college, the same structure. Um, again, we have our net earn is our start, which in this case is negative, plus yearly earnings times number of years. So we have Y equals about negative $112,000 plus $63,500 times X. Uh, we rearrange to get Y equals MX plus B. And finally, interpreting the slope and Y intercept, 
um, which is similar. Um, I'll just take you to this page. In college, uh, the slope is that we earn about $63,500 per year. And the intercept is that we start with negative $112,000 uh, at age 22. So comparing these two formulas, um, we can now actually work with estimation with a table and try to start to answer the question if a college eventually pays off. So we have a simple table here. We have a year, which is the year years after age 22, um, and then high school and college. And we have our two equations from the previous section. To figure out the value is at year zero, we simply plug in zero for x. So plugging in, those intercepts are going to be zero. We uh, get y equals 155-ish thousand and y equals 112-ish thousand in the college case. Um, then we enter those values in our table. So this is intuitively the start amounts or the B in our Y equals MX plus B. Um, <clears throat> for year one, we plug in one for X, plugging in one um, and multiplying out and add these together. We get 193,000 for the high school case and negative 48 for the college case. And we enter them in our table. We continue with year two, plug in two for X, uh, multiply and add together. We get these two values. Again, the high school as well in excess of, of college. So finally, though, for college, the net worth is positive by two years out of college. So at age 24, the net worth has turned positive. So we can notice a pattern here. Um, in the college column, each year is going to increase by $63,500 because that is the slope of our equation. Whereas in high school, similarly, each year will increase by about $39,000 since that is the slope there. So we can just use this model to jump ahead to later years. Um, for high school, we can just plug in 10, college, we can plug in 10, and we get 541,000 for high school, 524 for college, and then year 11, uh, 580 for high school, 587,000 for college. And finally, year, year 12 as well, just, just plugging in um, X. Um, so now our question, by what year does the college path have higher net earnings? By year 11, we see at age 33, 11 years after age 22, the college grad has earned more than the high school grad. Now, we just estimated with a table, we can estimate with a graph. So we can graph the net earnings for over time for both schooling paths using our table from before. We can start with high school years zero, one, and two. Uh, zero is on, the, or the years are on the x-axis and the y-axis is the earnings. And then we can also put those dots down for college and we can see the starts of two lines forming. Um, we can continue those lines. And again, because we have the same slope, the lines kind of are straight. The orange line is high school, the dotted line is college. And now we can think of what graphical feature shows you the net earnings at the start and which path starts out with higher net earnings, two very important um, things. The y-intercept where, where these lines cross the y-axis shows you the initial earnings at year zero, which really is age 22. And we can see that high school clearly has the net earnings at the start. The, it intercepts the y-axis at a higher point. Um, second, which graphical feature shows you the yearly earnings and with which path earns more per year, per year? The steepness of the line or the slope shows the yearly cost. And you can compare the purple line and the orange line, college and high school. And you can basically, we took the arrows uh, parallel to those lines, put those arrows together, and you can see that the college pathway earns more per year. That uh, purple line is steeper than the purple arrow is steeper than that orange arrow. Finally, we can ask which graphical feature shows you when college overtakes high school in net earnings. And we want to see if this result is consistent with our table. Um, so we can see at the start, college is starting to catch up catching up more, catching up more. Finally, intersects. Uh, this intersection shows where college overtakes high school in net earnings. It occurs ju sometime just before the 11th year, which is age 33, when we extend it to our x-axis. And this is consistent with our table. We saw at age 33, 11 years after age 22, college surpassed high school in earnings. Um, the next natural question is many people retire in their 60s. So what is the difference in net earnings after 40 years or age 62, 40 years after age 22? Um, we have to extend our graph to year 40. So doing so, we get something that looks like this. We can see uh, our previous graph was year zero through 15. But when we extend to z year zero for 40, this is what we get. Um, and if we look at when X equals 40, we can look at the difference between these two lines, as you can see uh, drawn out here. 
Um, we don't have to look at the difference visually, though. We can actually plug into our equation. Remember, we have this equation for y for high school, and we just plug in 40 to get the total value, which is about 1.7 million earnings to year 40. For college, we can just plug in 40 to our college uh, linear model. We plug in 40, and we get y equals about 2.4 million. So uh, to find the difference, we just subtract the college amount by the high school amount. We get about 731,000 decent chunk of change um, after by 40 years after age 22, so at age 62. So we can turn to our main question of does college pay off? It sure does. That's almost three quarters of a million dollars, which is a significant amount higher earnings from the college path by retirement age. However, this college payoff, we should note, does vary by major, school attended, scholarships amount, and all tons of other factors. This shows a typical payoff for median college grad salaries. Also, the same uh, applies to the high school salaries. Definitely many factors to consider. Finally, let's turn to our discussion on this topic. Um, imagine you have a friend who comments, you've shown that college is associated with higher earnings, but you haven't shown that college causes higher earnings. Your friend is actually correct. And for the discussion question, it's your turn to explain why. Then discuss how you could actually determine if college does cause higher earnings. That's all for today's Skew the Script. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.